Okay, this video is Human Development and Diversity for IB Geography on Local and Civil Society Resistance to Global Interaction. So the subtopics are rejection of globalized production and then rise of anti-immigration movements. So first of all, we'll look at campaigns against TNCs. Um, so TNCs are kind of said to control global food production in a kind of um, excessive manner according to organizations such as Greenpeace and that has led to various different kind of campaigns against them and one example of this is the um, Mattel group which produces Barbie dolls and they basically created a campaign accusing Greenpeace of large like mass deforestation and destruction to the environment which gained a lot of global recognition um, and that links to globalized production because it's this idea of TNCs having large uh, kind of influence in multiple places around the world because of course they have their headquarters but then they have their production kind of place in low cost areas around the world. And then we have campaigns in favor of local sourcing of food and goods by citizens. So those in favor of local sourcing of foods and goods believe that it increases market access and sales for the producers and that it improves consumers' understanding of food production. It also provides fresher foods, reduces food miles and has a smaller carbon footprint. It also reduces the need for long distances before it reaches the consumer, creates a more close relationship between producers, distributors, retailers and consumers also. And there's been, okay, so these are causes of the rise in anti-immigration movement. So there are competition from jobs, costs of housing may be rising, education and healthcare strains, crime increases possibly, and infectious disease um, from like obviously foreign places. And now we kind of see this idea of anti-immigration because of COVID and kind of beliefs around cultures and like, um, for example, there's been this rise in uh, discrimination against Asian populations, um, which could, could link potentially to this idea of rise of anti-immigration, anti-globalization and things like that. Okay, and now we can look at two case studies. So first of all, we have Trump's anti-immigration policies uh, regarding the US-Mexico border. So his policies were building a war between the USA and Mexico, which would take 3.5 years and cost $22 billion. Um, he deported 12 million illegal immigrants from the USA. There's also this secure communities program, which is the deportation of criminal offenders. He also created this ban on Muslims from certain countries. And in t on the 27th of January, 2017, tr Trump signed an executive order on seven countries to prevent radical Islamic terrorists from entering the USA and he created a 90-day ban. Um, he campaigned for the removal of sanctuary cities, which are places where government cooperation is limited to encourage people to report crimes without fear of deportation. Um, so these are obviously quite strong anti-immigration rules. And then we have uh, Le Pen in France, um, anti-immigration policies. So this is the National Front Party in France. So Le Pen is John Marie's daughter and Le Pen took over the National Front Party in 2011. And then after that, it kind of gained more and more popularity. And Le Pen considers globalization the root of France's problems, so obviously anti-globalization. Policies that were implemented were taxes on foreign workers, difficulty in becoming a French citizen, restricting immigration to 10,000 people a year, expelling illegal Im immigrants and those with criminal records, closing down radical Islamic centers and using the franc as currency, not euros, and also introducing protectionism, so 3% tariffs, for example, and also a 35% tax on foreign goods.